I'm really pleased to see the opening of the new Technical Rescue Training Centre here in West Yorkshire. West Yorkshire firefighters are amongst the best trained and best equipped in the world. Our urban search and rescue capability allows us to rescue people when they are trapped in buildings, if buildings collapse, when they are trapped in trenches, on water or even from high buildings and cranes should they get stuck. This new Technical Rescue Training Centre Supported by government funding allows us to train 365 days a year, 24 hours a day to maintain those skills at the highest possible levels so that our firefighters are available and ready to respond for the people of West Yorkshire and the region and nationally should they be required. My current role in the West Yorkshire Fire Service is watch manager. However, in the urban search and rescue environment, or USA for short, I am a team leader. My day-to-day -day responsibilities include ensuring the team are motivated, skilled and prepared to respond to any, any incident should the need arise. My team is made up of seven highly trained USAR technicians that provide a range of specialist skills including technical search and rescue, timber shoring, cutting various types of materials including metal, timber uh, and concrete. Ability to lift large amounts of debris is one of our roles and we also provide advanced casualty care. We are based within the West Yorkshire Fire and Rescue Service and provide an effective team that's capable of turning out 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Our team is one of 20 placed around the country to provide cover regionally and nationally. We also are a resource that can be used within the county to assist in any rescue that may be outside the capability of our local crews. Our primary role is USAR, which is the rescue of trapped persons from collapsed structures caused by natural disasters, for example, weather-related incidents, gas explosions and by terrorist actions. Because of our technical skills, we also attend a wide variety of incidents including large animal rescue, rope rescue and confined space rescue. Well, my role in the USAR team is a team leader, but I also have a specialism in uh, hot putting. We have two pieces of kit on the Module 2 which uh, allows us to cut through heavy gauge uh, steel. We have a Clucus which is a backpack um, which we can, is very mobile, that will cut any metals that we encounter and we also have Petrogen which is more controllable when cutting and that will cut 95% of the uh, metals. So we could turn up to a building collapse where there may be heavy steel girders in the rubble pile uh, preventing us from gaining access to the pile. So that's where we'd use it, or for um, train crashes where we may need to cut uh, heavy, heavy steel, uh, heavy gauge steel. We're at Wayne House Tower here at Halifax, and we've been we've set up a scenario where a grandfather and his son has uh, gone up the uh, the tower um, to have a to look round Wayne House Tower. His son has climbed up to another rampart, and it's a little internal staircase, and unfortunately it's slippery and he's fallen. He's become unconscious and he's got severe injuries. His grandfather then has panicked and has a heart attack and he's fallen down and he's got head injuries as well and he's become unconscious. And the team have uh, been briefed that there's two casualties rescued from the upper, upper portion of Wayne House Tower. One of the main difficulties with the rescue is the transition period when the uh, rescuer and the rescuee are coming over the initial edge. They have to be raised up to a point where they can step back off the edge. At that position, the, the, gent, the rescuer has to lean well back so that his feet are on the, the edge of the tower and he has to walk down the tower with the casualty, which is very difficult because as the wind's blowing, it wants to spin the stretch around. So he's got to walk down, looking at his casualty, monitoring his casualty at the same time, as checking his systems that are in place and slowly coming down the tower. The HEART, or the Hazardous Area Response Team, is a Department of Health sponsored project whereby we'll be putting extended trained paramedics and technicians into areas that normally we wouldn't be able to, to work, which will allow us to take clinical skills in to work alongside our fire and rescue colleagues. Um, the project that we ran was the initial trial project for the Department of Health and we couldn't have done it without the help of the West Yorkshire Fire USAR team. We Historically we've trained every month with them for the last 15 months so the advantage is when we get to a scene everybody's on first name terms. We understand what they do, i.e. 
uh, tunnel in or work at height and, and find the patient. And then once they've found the patient, we'll follow them in, stabilise the casualty with clinical intervention, uh, and some of it's quite specialised clinical intervention, and then between ourselves and West Yorkshire Fire, extricate the casualty to a place of safety. My role in USA is to design and build shoring systems to enable us to be able to go into a collapsed structure. Um, to qualify me for this, I've been on a variety of courses at the Fire Service College at Morton, which has given me all the skills and knowledge to help me to be able to do this role. On most of our modules, we carry an American system called Paratech, which is an extremely strong aluminium shoring system. When we begin to run out of Paratech, we have also a module carrying five or six tonnes of timber, which we then can design and build timber shoring systems. And to support us further with that, we carry a large variety of joinery equipment such as mitre saws, circular saws, nail guns, etc. The sort of instance we would attend would be, for instance, a gas explosion uh, where we had persons trapped within that property. We might have, say, shore up a wall or a doorway to enable rescuers to get actually into the property, rescue a casualty and get them out safely. So it is there primarily to, to save the rescuers from injury and aid the casualty as well. I'm an urban search technician and I also, as a specialist, I use chainsaws. The kind of incidents where we would use a chainsaw are structural collapse. We would be responsible for cutting away any of the timber way work that was uh, causing us any sort of problems in terms of access or egress. Uh, we'd also use it at every rescue so that we could uh, cut away small trees or trees and just so that we could get access in uh, remote locations. We have two types of uh, chainsaw, both of them are still. One of them will uh, just cut primarily wood. The second one will, is a specialist rescue saw that will cut through armoured glass, uh, wood and uh, sheet metal. So in I Bay warehousing and sandwich panel, roofs or walls, it would cut as a, quite a nice access hole so that we could get into the building to deal with any sort of incident that we might. This is Dave, he's the newest member of uh, the West Yorkshire Urban Search and Rescue team. As you can see he's a black Labrador, he's only 12 months of age at the moment, but when he grades he will be used um, to indicate at life casualties, uh, which could be in terrorist attacks, collapsed buildings, uh, major train derailments, uh, bank site searches, that sort of thing. Uh, Dave's basic training involves um, the use of the dog's natural instincts, which is the play and prey drive, which all dogs are capable of. Uh, what we try and do is, is bring out uh, the, the play drive to him, which we use uh, his favourite toy or some kind of stimulus that will produce the bark that we require to indicate where the casualty is. The main sense Dave will be using when he's trying to locate casualties with his, his sense of smell. Uh, he will get himself in a downwind position, use the wind to his advantage to locate the li a live casualty, like we said earlier on, uh, and indicate by barking. Dave has several pieces of equipment he'll use during his searches. Uh, one being his reflective harness, a high visibility harness so he can see him while he's working in low light uh, conditions. And it also uh, aids him and works as a trigger, so when he knows the harness goes on, he knows it's work time and he's going to go to work to find casualties. Other pieces of uh, safety equipment we use for the dog are protective boots. Put them obviously on the dog's feet to protect him against sharps, rebar on rubble piles, and any real slippy surface, as you can see, they're, they're treaded so he can get a grip. When he's not at work, uh, working for West Yorkshire Fire Service, he does live with us at home as a family pet, along with the other couple of dogs we've got and my young family. <laughs>